Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Welcome, my friend. Welcome to the middle of the week. I appreciate so much that you're making Bible Track Echoes, this radio program, a part of your day. I'm sitting here in front of the microphone with my Bible open. It's open to Psalm 97. If it's possible right now for you to reach over and pick up your own copy of the Word of God and join me there, that would be great. We're going to complete our look at this Psalm today, Psalm 97. While you're getting that out, get something on which you can jot some notes. I've got some words beginning with the letter S for you today. That'll be part of the outline for the last three verses here in Psalm 97. I've got a gospel tract I want to urge you to get from us. This track, along with a free sample packet of tracks, is really the backbone of what we do here. We've been, for 80 years, we have been publishing gospel tracks and giving them away free all over the world. And I'd love for you and I to become a partner together in the work of sharing the gospel with lost people. I'll say more about this track here in just a minute, but let us lead into our Bible study time this way. Have you noticed how many people want to go to heaven and they actually think they're going to go to heaven? Yet, of those same people, have you noticed how few of them hate sin? Now, listen, they hate it when people sin against them, but what they don't hate is the sin in their own life. Back in the first century, one of the church fathers, a godly man, was arrested by the emperor of Rome, and the emperor sought to find out how he could get this man of God to deny Christ. Well, all kinds of methods were put forth. One guy suggested that they put him in a dingy, dark dungeon, but then well, they knew this man of God would just use it as a place to worship God and meditate on the things of God. Somebody else said, well, let's threaten him with death. (laughs) But of course, this man of God was looking forward to going to heaven. Finally, finally, one man said this, and I quote, there's only one thing that will give him pain. To cause this man to suffer, you have to make him sin. He is afraid of nothing except sin, end quote. Did you notice the end? He's afraid of nothing except sin. Tell me, is, is that true for you and me? Do we fear committing sin? Do we hate evil? That's going to come up here in our Bible passage for today. Join me in Psalm 97. I mentioned a gospel tract a moment ago. Oh, dear friend, I say this almost every single day, but I say it because I want you to get this honed into your mind. Do you know what a gospel tract is? A gospel tract, and that word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T, a gospel tract is a short simple, written presentation of God's plan of salvation. The salvation that God has for people is found in his son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, shed his blood, was buried and rose again the third day. Dear friend, when you or anyone receives Christ as Savior, they are set free. But the gospel tract in my hand right now is entitled Proclaim Liberty. Proclaim Liberty. It's based upon the whole idea of freedom. It asks this question, is freedom wonderful? And the answer is yes. And it says, if you don't believe that, ask an enslaved victim in some other land who suffers under the cruel bondage of tyranny. It talks about political freedom and so on. But it goes from there to spiritual freedom because people who are living in a free country are not free from things like this, a guilty conscience, from fear of death, from coming judgment 
from the enslaving power of sin over the life, but they can have these kinds of freedoms. They can be set at liberty through Jesus Christ, and that's what this gospel tract talks about. The liberty bell is on the front of that. Matter of fact, the verse quoted from Leviticus that's on the liberty bell is quoted in this tract. There is liberty in Christ, my friend. Let's share that good news that's found in the person of Jesus Christ. Get this track and that free sample packet from us, would you please? At the end of the program, my announcer is going to come back on and give you three ways by which you can give to us your name and mailing address. Pick out the way, the method that works best for you, and please do that today, or just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. All right? If your Bible's open there, Psalm 97, the last three verses, beginning at verse 10, here's what the Bible says. Ye that love the Lord hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, ye righteous, and give thanks as a remembrance of his holiness. Now, friend, Psalm 97 is a coronation psalm. It was sung about the future rule and reign of Christ, the Messiah on earth. You find the word glad or gladness three times in this hymn here, this song. In verses 1 through 7, we're told there that all the earth will be glad when Christ reigns on earth. In verses 8 and 9, we're told the Jews will be glad in that day. And now, in verses 10 through 12, all the righteous will be glad when Christ rules and reigns. Now, friend, righteous people are right because they love doing right. They practice righteousness. They love conducting their day-to-day lives based on God's standards of what's right, and they hate evil. They hate sin. They hate it when they see it in the world, to be sure, but even worse, they hate sin when they find it in their own lives. Now, during the 1,000-year reign of Christ on earth, will people be able to sin? The answer is yes. Not all who are born during this era were going to receive Christ as their Savior. The Bible says at the end of the thousand-year reign of Christ, there will be an open rebellion against King Jesus. That's what Revelation 19.7 says. Even though these people were living under the reign of a perfect king, were living in a perfect world environment, many will not want to to live and follow Christ. You see, despite what some health professionals say, it's not the environment we grow up in that makes us sinners. It's the nature of our humanity. We're born in sin and we practice our nature. Well, I mentioned I got three words beginning with the letter S for you today. Get your pen and paper out and jot them down. Number one is the word safety. The word safety based upon verse 10. Verse 10 talks about the safety of God's saints. God preserves, or the word means puts a hedge about the righteous. God protects his own. Now, friend, why do I believe that I cannot ever lose my salvation that I got from Christ? I believe that because I have God's protective care and hedge around my life. The verse says, he delivers me out of the hand of the wicked. How does the famous verse in the end of the book of Romans chapter 8 end? It ends with these words, if God be for us, who can be against us? I am safe in the arms of Christ. Great old hymn. Word number one is safety. My second word is the word sowing. Sowing, based upon verse 11, and I'm not talking about sowing with a needle and thread. I'm referring to the kind of sowing that a farmer would do. Look at verse 11. It says this, light is sown, or the word means planted. Light is sown or planted for the righteous. One of the blessings of practicing a righteous life pattern is that along my life path, your life path, we're going to find light. We're going to find light, and by the word light, I mean things like this, hope, truth, comfort, encouragement, and help. These are the things that God has gone ahead of us with, and he's planted them in the path for us. We find them when we, first of all, are walking in righteousness, and number two, we find them when we need them. 
if you and I are walking in our own wisdom, walking in our own strength, if we're walking using our own standards of what's right and wrong and so on, friend, we will not find this light that God has sown for us. You know why? Because we're not in the path God has for us. We're on our own path, and his plantings aren't there. Word number one, safety. Word number two, sowing. Word number three is the word singing based upon verse 12. Ho, ho, ho. When Christ is personally king on earth, there will be rejoicing. We will have much for which to be thankful. Those are the two key thoughts there in verse 12, rejoicing and thankfulness. Verse 12 points out that One particular reason behind our rejoicing and behind our thankfulness, that one item is the holiness of God. When Christ sits as king on the earth, the whole earth will remember the holiness of Christ. Remember, first of all, his holiness when he came the first time. He lived a holy life. They set traps for him to try to get him to uh, commit sin and so on. He didn't fall into one of them. He couldn't. He was God in the flesh. He lived a holy life, which made him fit to die as our Savior. But they're also going to give thanks and rejoice at the holiness being implemented by Christ there as he rules and reigns from Jerusalem on planet Earth. Holiness will be the order of the day all over the world for 1,000 years. You see, during that time period, Satan will be bound in the bottomless pit. He'll be unable to work his woes. But let me, let me hopefully be very, very practical for us, for you and me today. This morning, knowing I was going to be teaching this, I did something I do every day, but I did it with a fresh consciousness. I prayed Romans 12, 1 and 2 back to God. You know the verses that say, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. Those verses, I made my life a fresh living sacrifice to God. And again, I remade my heart Christ's throne. Jesus may not be sitting enthroned in Jerusalem today, but he is sitting enthroned in my heart. And when I practice, if you practice, when you and I practice living under King Jesus, we're going to find it easy to rejoice and be thankful. Tell me, my friend, do you live a trouble-free life? I can't even say that with a straight face. Trouble-free life? You got to be kidding me. Friend, neither do I. But I already know what I'm going to find today. I'm going to find God's light, which he has planted for me today. I will live protected by my God today. And I will find reasons to rejoice because living according to God's righteous ways, I'll be practicing the character of God. I'll be like Jesus. Here's a song for you to be humming and thinking about today. I hope you know this old hymn. The song says, it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Our present world is not a holy place. King Jesus is not sitting enthroned on earth. But friend, you and I, as we live out a righteous life and we find reasons to rejoice and be thankful during that point in time, we will have to deal with some of the ugliness of our world, but it will be worth it all. We'll remember his holiness and how he dealt with us during these days. We'll rule and reign with him. Oh, friend, do you know Christ? If you don't, you need him as your Savior now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks. P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember... The word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.